Well, good morning, church. I said good morning, church. That's better. Now you're awake. Well, I'm glad to be here. And uh, about all I can say about that is y'all must be bluttons for punishment. I, that's about all I can figure out. But I, I appreciate Joe calling me and asking me and the other elders. And um, So uh, I want to talk to you about something this morning. I want to encourage you. You know, the Apostle Paul told the young preacher Timothy in the book of 2 Timothy, he said, preach the word, be in season, out of season. And then he said, reprove, rebuke, and exhort. And I'm this morning wanting to exhort you. I hope this lesson will encourage you, because that's the design of it. We need encouragement at times, don't we? We really do. You know, Satan's doing everything he can to discourage us. And he's actively at work, and he's going to do everything he can to cause problems for us. But James says, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. But I want to encourage you. I want to talk to you this morning about heaven. Now, I would assume that everybody here this morning wants to go to heaven. If there's anybody here this morning that doesn't want to go to heaven, would you please stand up? Joe, I don't see anybody standing up. <laughs> so that tells me that we all want to go to heaven, and that's good. And I want to talk to you a little bit about heaven. I'm not going to tell you anything new that you don't already know. But I'm going to remind you of some things. You know, Paul, uh, the Apostle Peter, two times in the book of uh, Peter, said, uh, I'm, sorry, I'm paraphrasing, he said, I'm going to tell you some things. I, I know you already know them, but I'm going to tell you anyway. I'm going to remind you anyway. We have a tendency at times to forget, don't we? I'm a firm believer that uh, we need to do a lot of repetition sometimes in our preaching. We, there are certain subjects that we need to teach more on. And I believe that one of the reasons that we have a lot of the divorces in the church, you know, when I grew up back in the, uh, you just didn't have that. You just didn't ever hear of a divorce in the church. But nowadays it's gotten to where uh, there's so much of it. Uh, where we live, we've got a young couple across the street, been married 12 years, got two beautiful children. And they're in the middle of one and they're just fighting with each other and just and the children are right, you know, it just tearing that family all to pieces. And so... I'm here to encourage you, to exhort you. And I'm glad that our young man led that song about heaven. I didn't tell him to leave it, so I'm sure I'm glad he did. Jesus, in our scripture reading this morning, Matthew chapter, I mean John chapter 14, 1 through 6, tells us there, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again, receive you unto myself, that where I am there you may be also. Now Thomas looked at Jesus and said, well, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man will come to the Father except through or by me. We need to remember that the only way to heaven is in and through Jesus Christ. And any doctrine that's taught that teaches different than that is a false doctrine. It's only because of Christ that we have the hope, and I mentioned earlier this morning, his resurrection from the grave. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 over and over and over again emphasizes the resurre his resurrection from the grave is why we have that hope, that assurance. And God has made promises to us in his word that if we are obedient to him, we 
can't earn our way into heaven, but if we are obedient to him, that he will manifest to us his grace. And he has done that through his son, Jesus Christ, by letting him die on the cross. And he will forgive us when we fall, if we're willing to repent. First John chapter 1, start about the seventh verse. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so we want to go to heaven. And I want to mention to you some things this morning about heaven. In a recent survey in America, that survey showed that the majority of Americans believe they will go to heaven. But when asked if it was necessary for them to have a relationship with Jesus Christ, they said, well, not really, but I still believe I'm going to go to heaven. They did another survey, and in that survey, they asked them, do you believe that they'll go to heaven? And two-thirds of them said, I believe that I'll go to heaven. But one half of one percent said, I believe I'll go to hell. Interesting. Interesting. So some things I want to mention to you about heaven. First of all, heaven is a real place. And I talk to people a lot, and I've had people tell me just recently, oh, I, I, I don't believe that. I believe that's just something somebody made up and, and just to soothe people's conscience a little bit. But I don't believe there's really a, a place called heaven, someplace up in the sky. You say, I, I, don't, I don't believe that. Well, let's look at some verses. I want you to turn to the book of Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. Now, Jesus has already been resurrected from the grave, and he's with his apostles, and he's conversing with them and teaching them. And when he was resurrected from the grave, the Bible tells us that he spent 40 days before leaving this earth. And so he's spending time with them and talking to them. And if you look in verse Chapter 1, beginning with verse 9. The scripture says, And when he had spoken these things, what things? Well, the things that are written there in the first eight verses. When he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye've seen him go into heaven. I want you to notice the, t the times that heaven is mentioned. Chapter, uh, the first chapter there, verse 10. They looked steadfastly toward heaven. Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye looking into heaven? This same Jesus is taken up from you into heaven. So so come like manner as you see him go into heaven. So Jesus went to heaven. And the apostles stood there and they looked. And they looked until he was totally out of their sight. Jesus said in that reading, John, 15, John 14, 1 through 6, And if I go away, I will what? Come again. I will come in and receive to myself that where I am, there you may be also. I'll turn to the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. In the book of Thess uh, the church at Thessalonica, false teachers had gotten into that church, and they were teaching those folks that their dead relatives would have no part in the resurrection. That they died, they were physically dead, they were buried into the earth, and, and they'd have no part in the resurrection. In the fourth chapter there, beginning with verse 13, here's what Paul said. But will not have you ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that is, dead in Christ. They are asleep. He refers it to or sleep. That ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Now we need to understand there are those who are asleep with hope, and there's, there are those who are asleep who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain of the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. 
for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven. And isn't that what those angels told those apostles in Acts chapter 1 that we just read? Isn't that what he told them? Sure. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. You see, the day's going to come. Jesus is going to come back. We don't know when it is. No man knows that. But one day he's going to come back. He made a promise that he would. And he's going to keep that promise. And when he comes, he's going to come in the clouds just as he went up in the clouds. He's going to come in the clouds. And the Bible says we'll meet him in the air and we will forever be with him. He'll never set foot on this earth again. And with all the premillennial teaching that's going on and all the things I talked about this morning that's going on, this earth's going to go away. Second chapter, Peter chapter 3, verse 9, the Bible tells us in those verses that follow that the, this, this world and everything in it's going to be destroyed. But we don't have to worry about that because, you see, we're going to meet the Lord in the air. And we're going to go with him. If we're a Christian, we're going to go with him into heaven. And we for forever be with him and so heaven is a real place look with me in the book of Acts chapter 7 and here we find Stephen one of the uh, we believe deacons that was appointed in the church and Stephen was a very active deacon he, he went down to Samaria and was having a great gospel meeting down there but in Acts chapter 7, Peter runs into some opposition. And uh, we find at the end of that chapter, he's stoned to death. And Saul, who becomes the Apostle Paul, is standing there holding the coats of those. But if you look in Acts chapter 7, begin with verse 46. Acts 7, verse 46. The Bible says, speaking of God, Jesus in the possession of the Gentiles, whom God drove out before our fathers and places of David, who found favor before God and desired to find a tabernacle for God for the God of Jacob. But Solomon built him a built him a house. Howbeit the most high dwelleth not in temples made with hands, so saith the prophet. Heaven is my throne, earth is my footstool. What house will you build me, says the Lord, for what is the place of my rest? Heaven is the throne of God. That's where God resides. I had a man tell me not too long ago, well, I, I believe God just abides in everybody's head. That's, that's where he lives. Well, God needs to abide in our hearts. We need to let him abide within our hearts, but God himself, the Bible says heaven is his throne. And that's where he is. In Matthew 6, Verse 9, when Jesus was teaching the disciples how to pray, remember how he started that prayer? Our Father, which what? Art in heaven. Heaven's a real place. It truly, really does exist. And don't you let anybody ever convince you otherwise. There's lots of people who will try to. They believe it's all a big fairy tale. I had a man tell me not long ago, hey, it's just a big fairy tale. The Bible's just a big fairy tale. There's no such place, place called heaven. There's no such place called hell. You die, you just die. You bury in the ground. That's it. That's the end of all things. There's a lot of people who believe that. But heaven is real. Heaven is reachable. Heaven is reachable. Look back again, John 14 again. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. For not so I told you. I go, and I know it's verse 3, I go and prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that, what? Where I am, you may be also. Wouldn't be any good to have a place called heaven if we couldn't go there, would it? But it's reachable. It's not only real, it is reachable. First Thessalonians chapter 4, 17, again. 
When we meet the Lord in the air, so shall we ever be with the Lord or always be with the Lord. When we live our lives and live close to the Lord as best we can, and when we sin, we ask the Lord to, to forgive us. We repent of that, and we ask him to forgive us. He's promised that he will. And God does not want us to live in this life in fear of hell. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that hell is not a terrible place. It is. It's an awful place. We can't, we can't conceive of how bad it will be. I don't want to find out, do you? But it's real. Just as sure as heaven's real, so is hell. But God does not want us to live this life in fear of hell. He wants us to live this life in hope of heaven. In the book of 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, the Bible says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us, not willing that any man should perish, but that all men should come to repentance. See, God's will is, is that everyone live in heaven. He wants everyone to live in heaven. But Jesus tells in the Sermon on the Mount, in the seventh chapter of Matthew, that there are two ways that people travel in this life. One of those ways is broad, the gate is wide, it leads to destruction. There's another one, it's got a very narrow gate, a very narrow path, a very narrow way, and it leads to eternal life, and few there be that find it. So Jesus said, there's a comparison of many that will go the broad way as well as, as few that will go the narrow way. The reality is that most folks in this world are going to choose that broad way. But that's not God's will. God made us people of choice, and we can choose. We can choose whether we want to go to heaven. We can choose whether we want to go to hell. So we want to make that choice of going to heaven. And we can do that because it is a reachable place. It's not the figment of our imagination or anybody else's imagination. Number three... Heaven is a place of reward. It's a place of reward. Look with me in the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 11 and 12. He starts verse 10. He says, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. Now we need to understand when we live the Christian life that there are going to be people that are going to make fun of us. There are going to be people going to be persecuted us. Sometimes on the job, Joe, you and I can associate with that. It was tough, wasn't it? It was tough. And it got tougher. And uh, I remember I had a man tell me one time that, uh, uh, that uh, I, I shouldn't uh, uh, go to church on Sunday. I should go play golf with the, one of the pr pr vice presidents of the company. And I told him, I said, I can't do that. I've already, got, I've already got something set on Sundays, and it's not playing golf. And he laughed at me. I had a man tell me one time, he, said, he asked me, he said, What's your, what is your biggest desire on this earth what do you want more than anything else I said I want to take myself and my wife and my children to heaven you know that wasn't the answer he was looking for he laughed at me and he said we don't need you we don't have any use for you you can leave that's okay that's all right that's going to happen people will persecute people will laugh but you got to keep your faith and you got to keep your eyes on Jesus. That's what we have to do. And he says, if we'll do that, great is our reward in heaven, even when those things happen. Because heaven is a place of reward. Look with me in the book of um, 2 Timothy 4, verse 8. Very familiar passage. He says there in verse 6, beginning, For I am now ready to be offered. This is 2 Timothy 4. For I am now ready to be offered.
and the time of my departure is at hand. I've fought a good fight. I've finished my course. I've kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the just judge, shall judge me at that day, and not to me only, but to all them also that love is appearing. Do you love God, Jesus appearing? Are you anxiously awaiting his appearing? Can we say like John said as he chose the book of, 11, the book of Revelation when he said, even so, come Lord Jesus? Do we want him to come? I hope we do. I hope we do. It's a place of great reward. Revelation 2, verse 10. Be faithful unto death. I'll give you a crown of life. In other words, be faithful even if it causes your death. And I'll give you a crown of life. And so heaven is a place of reward. Heaven is a restful place. You'll notice that all these things that I mentioned to you begin with the letter R. I don't know if you picked up on that. <laughs> Hope so. Heaven is a restful place. Revelation 14, verse 13. The Apostle John, you remember, was allowed to look into heaven and see visions of heaven. And the scripture says there in Revelation 14, 13, Then I heard a voice from heaven to me say, Write, rather, write, Blessed are those who die in the Lord. From now on, yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. You see, when we get to heaven, all the trials and the tribulations and the problems that we've had in life, we're not going to have those anymore. And all the good things that we've done to serve the Lord will follow us, but we'll be able to rest too. From those. Look at Revelation 21. I love the 21st chapter of Revelation because of the scripture that it gives us of heaven. And I want you to look at verses 3 and 4. I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, nor pain, for the former things are passed away. Let me ask you this. Do you have sorrow in your life? Do you have crying in your life? Do you have pain in your life? Do you have death of loved ones in your life? If we all, all of us are older have had that and still do have it, don't we? Those of you that are young, maybe you haven't experienced that yet, but if you live long enough, you will. But in heaven, there won't be any of that. We'll rest from that because it won't exist. Finally, heaven is a prepared place. It's a prepared place. Jesus said, I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again. That Where I am there, you may be also. Jesus is in heaven right now preparing a place for you and for me and for all faithful Christians in this world. I wish that as I look back on my life, I think about sometimes some people that I talk to about heaven and about how to get to heaven, what we must do in order to prepare for that place. And I think about some that didn't listen. And they died never having obeyed the gospel. And it bothers me. Because I think, you know, what more could I have said? What more could I have done? Could I have said something different? And I think any gospel preacher and any elder who spends the time that is spent in trying to teach and encourage people to reach for that would say they felt the same way. question this morning to each of us is, are we ready to go? Are we ready to go to heaven? Or have we made preparation for it? You know, I, this last week I had to go to the doctor and have a test done. I won't tell you what kind. 
I had to do a whole lot of preparation the day before in order to take that test. It wasn't fun either. You probably know what I'm talking about. But I had to do a lot of preparation in order to successfully accomplish what I wanted to accomplish. Well, we have to do a lot of preparation if we want to go to heaven. We have to obey the gospel. If you're here this morning and you have never obeyed the gospel, I beg you, I plead with you, I'll get down on my knees if I have to. And I know the elders feel the same way. To get you to obey the gospel. If you believe, if you're here this morning, you truly do believe that Jesus is the Son of God. That he came to this earth, born of a virgin, and he died on a cross for your sins. And you believe that then that's your first step. Upon that belief on hearing the gospel, the Bible tells us we have to repent of our sin. Luke chapter 13, verse 3 and 5, twice Jesus said, I tell you, except you repent, you shall die in your sins. In the book of John chapter 8, verse 24, Jesus said, I tell you, unless you believe that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. We have to repent, believe, and we have to repent. Repent just simply means we're going to stop living the way we've been living and start living for God. Start, stop doing things our way and start doing God, things the Lord's way. It's a turnaround. It's a change in life that is the way God says for us to be. Upon that repentance, you're willing to confess your faith in Christ. You believe Jesus' Son, but you must confess it. Jesus said in the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verses 22 and, or 32 and 33, He said, I say unto you that whosoever confesses me before men, him will I confess before my Father which is in heaven. But he that denies me before men, him will I deny before my Father which is in heaven. When Jesus asked Peter in Matthew 16, who do men say that I am? They said, well, you're one of the prophets, you're, you're John, whoever. And Jesus, and Jesus said, Peter, who do you say that I am? Jesus, Peter said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And you have to confess that. And then be baptized for the forgiveness of sins. And my friend and brethren, it doesn't make any difference what any preacher says if he's not teaching what Jesus says. And the fact of the matter is with all the denominations we have in this world and the last time I looked, Joe, there were over 32,000 in the world, 32,335 denominations and that was three years ago and I don't know how many more have been added since. And the vast majority of them do not teach baptism for the remission of sins. Baptism. Jesus said in Galatians, or Paul said in Galatians chapter 3, verse 22, or 27 rather, he said, As for as many of you as have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. You see, we have to be in Christ. And the way we get into Christ is that we have to be baptized. And in Mark chapter 16, 15 and 16, Jesus says, and Go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. And I don't know how, any, how much plainer it could make, be made, Joe, than that. When our Lord said, he that believes and is baptized shall be saved. I don't know how any plainer it could be made. Are you willing to be baptized this morning for the forgiveness of your sins and become a Christian and start your journey to heaven? That's what you need to do if you haven't done it. We're going to sing a song to encourage you to do that and go to that place one day that's real, that's re reachable, that's rewarding, and all these other things we've talked about. You'll never be sorry for obeying the gospel. You will be sorry if you don't. Would you come as we're led in song? 
You can do that now while we stand and sing.